In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. This fourth Sunday after Easter, our Lord is again preparing his disciples for his ascension into heaven. It is necessary that he should leave them. And I know it's difficult for us to grasp this concept. Why cannot Christ stay here with us forever? And he does, in a manner, in the Holy Eucharist, remain with us until the end of time. But there is something about our fallen nature that we cling to that which is physical, that which we can see and touch. And as long as Christ remains with us in his humanity, we find it difficult, if not impossible, to lift our thoughts, our ideas to the supernatural, to the pure spirit of God in his divinity. We are very materialistic, we are composed of body and soul, and our natural, I should say, our fallen nature, the inclination of our fallen nature is to hold on to that which is physical, only that which is real, what we can see and touch and feel, that which we hear and taste. If it doesn't affect our bodily senses, we forget about it. We even go so far as to say that it is not real, that it doesn't exist. And we create a materialistic world. We create a materialistic God. And I can ask very simply, where is your heart? And that is, you make it your God. Where your heart is, that is where your God is. And too often, our hearts are with the material things around us. And Christ, the Son of God, came because he knows this weakness of ours. And so he showed us God in the flesh. True God, the Son of God, whom we could see, hear, touch, tangibly hear with all his humanity. Here is God. But he came in his humanity not to just accommodate us in our weakness, but he came to elevate us from our weakness to a higher level. And if we look throughout the Gospels, the message of Christ seems very clear that we must deny ourselves, we must die to ourselves, we must take up our cross, we must follow him. These physical, material things, they are all passing away. He tells us not to worry about the things of the body, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to sleep. Don't worry about those things. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and its justice, and all these other things will be given you besides. And we tend to invert that order. And that materialism, if you will, has infected even the apostles as we see in today's gospel. They are filled with sorrow because Christ is telling them, I'm going to leave you. The Holy Ghost is going to come, but they don't know the Holy Ghost. They can't see the Holy Ghost. And so they're at this loss. They feel this pain that, of separation that's coming. Their hearts are filled with anxiety. And the Lord is telling them, relax. Have a little bit of faith. I'm going to leave you, but I will send the Holy Ghost. And he will teach you all the things that I have taught you. You will begin to see. You will begin to understand. Until now, you can't see. You can't understand because you're looking at me in the flesh. And my flesh, my very presence, has become the obstacle for you to see and understand. So many times in the gospel, our Lord spoke and the apostles did not understand. This message was hidden from them. It was hidden from them because they were only looking at the material. They were only looking at a natural level. They could not raise their hearts, their minds, their thoughts to the supernatural. And so it is necessary that Christ physically leave them. It is for their good, it is for their advancement that he depart from them. 
And I remind us of all of these things because the same happens in our own lives. Very often in difficult situations, we question, where is God? Why can't I see God? Why can't I hear God? Why doesn't he speak to me? If only I could have been there when Christ was here in the flesh. If only God would speak to me now, if he would only appear to me now. And we are like doubting Thomas that we saw on the first Sunday after Easter. And our Lord said, Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. And that is what Christ is calling us to. We have not seen Christ in the flesh. We have not heard him with our own ears. We have not gone and touched our finger into the wounds of his nails in his hands or stuck our hand into his side. But we believe. And we believe in the invisible God. We believe in the invisible God. We believe in the Holy Ghost because Christ has said it is so, because Christ came in the flesh. He lowered himself to our level. And now he's calling for us. He's reaching out his hand to lift us up to his level. Come, look for the supernatural. Look for the immaterial. Look for that which is above. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and its justice. Everything else will be given you besides. Stop worrying about fairness in this world. Stop worrying about equality in this world. Worry about your soul. Don't worry about whether you're getting what someone else is getting or that they're getting more than you or it's life is not fair. Life's not fair. There's no equality. You want justice, you will get it in eternity. On the last day, there will be justice. And I think far from seeking justice on that last day, what we will be asking for is mercy. But now is the time of mercy. Now is the time of forgiveness. Now is the time of repentance. Now is the time for us to raise our thoughts, our hearts to the supernatural and not worry about the things of this earth. Not seek a God in what we eat, what we wear, where we go, who we associate with, but to seek God with the soul, with the heart, with the mind, on this immaterial level. We can follow Christ right into heaven. But to follow Christ into heaven, to rise with him at that last day, we have to first follow him to Calvary. We must first die to this world, die to the senses, and begin to see beyond the physical senses. As I, the spiritual writers often suggest, to see with the eye of the soul. That is what Christ is leading us to. That is where we must head. That must be our goal. Put off the things of this world. Use the things of this world as if you use them not. For Christ is the Son of God, the God who is invisible, who is pure spirit, the Father, the Holy Ghost, the Son, they are all one, they are all together. Christ tells us when he was here in his flesh, when you see me, you see the Father. The Father and I are one. And I suggest to you also when you receive the Holy Ghost, when you worship God in spirit, the Son is there with him as well. You receive the Trinity together. It is all or nothing. It's not piecemeal. To worship God in spirit 
is to worship the Trinity. And it is to pay homage even to Christ in his humanity. Benedictio de omnipotentus patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen.